IG. If you want to go live on IG with me, follow me. One touch. O N E. Period. <laughs> Damn. There we go. Found him. Mm -hmm. What's going on? All right, everybody should be able to go live now. I don't know what happened last time, but hey, what's going on? Now we good, Wash. I found him. I already requested a live. Here go Renegade coming in. Thank you. I don't know what happened. IG was just acting completely funny. You know how IG goes. Please don't block me, IG. I like you. Don't mess up the live tonight, please. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but we're all good to go now. Um, I'm adding them in. <clears throat> Once everybody steps alive, we're good to go. Good to go. Wash. It says unavailable to join for some reason. I don't know why. Renegade. And I don't know what's going on here. Hey, what's going on, guys? We're adding everybody on. We're starting to live right now. Yo. All right, Wash, how you doing? We get Renegade on. Oh, there Here's we go. Here's Renegade. Hey, here we go. <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? Hey, hey, hey. What's going hey, on, hey. everybody? What is hey, going hey. on? Hey. hey, good night. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thanks yeah. for staying up with me, guys. Thank you. I'm Omar from Washback and uh North California. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm in California. Who, who's breaking up with that? Are you, you guys, uh, you guys are located in Southern California, am I correct? Southern California, we make everything in Anaheim, okay, California. Great, great, That's great right. news to know, yeah. Um, as uh, I, I was doing a little research on you guys, uh, it seems like you guys are mostly... Uh, how did Renegade come about? Is Were you guys mostly dealing with big rigs or... Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what, the way it came about is, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know it. They only see kind of the um, detailing end of it. But that's kind of like a fin the final process for us. How it originally started is we manufacture, to this day we still do actually, we manufacture sanding belts for grinding metal and grinding wood and metal <laughs> fabrication. Um, and that eventually led us to metal polishing. Uh, so we started making polishing compounds and po polishing wheels for metal finishing nice. first on the industrial side of it. And then we got into the big rig scene uh, where you've got a lot of, you know, um, one man, two man, three man uh, and women shops uh, and mobile detailers and polishers taking care of rigs. Wow. And then from there, we started making liquid metal polish. And then from there, uh, we started making the rest of the stuff, you know, degreasers and air fresheners and glass cleaners and men, you name it. Paint right, polishes, okay. all that kind of fun yeah, stuff. So, so basically, it did start off as a product line for big rigs. And uh, yeah, with yeah, yeah, within within our world that we're talking about, it mostly on the business to consumer side of it. It really started off in big rigs. Right, right, right. right. Wow. And um, you know, you guys caught my attention, man. I I, I see you guys do a lot of chrome and metal polishing, and I was like, man, you know what? Those guys do. A fantastic job with the with the chrome finishes and the polishes and stuff. You know, it was really amazing because yeah. you know you really don't see a lot of those guys in the detail community that that take on you know metal polishing jobs like that and really you know really have a has a good name for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you bring up a good point because we were just at the mobile. Uh, uh, detailers convention down in Orlando a couple of weeks ago and man I can't tell you how many detailers want to pick up that that trade of being able to provide uh, metal polishing whether it's for big rigs or forged wheels um, or anything in, in the right right, right 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 and uh, you know it seemed like at one point in time uh, metal polishing for for chrome wheels or whatever was kind of a thing and it seemed like people got away from the chrome. I don't know if it's because uh, of the maintenance or, you know. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yep, it, yep. it's for a couple of reasons. Like when I first joined this racket, you know, and I'm going to age myself a little bit. I'm, you know, I've been in this industry since, since 1989, and man, if you didn't have chrome wheels on your car back in the 80s and 90s, man, like you were like, you know, oh, like right. you know, step it up sometime. Right. But you know, chrome became expensive. It became you know, the regulatory environment to put chrome. Uh, plating into effect was you know we used to have maybe 50 or 60 chrome shops just in southern california we're, we're down to like maybe two now wow. um so that was an issue and then of course you know taste changed i mean it's like people you know i mean just chrome just out of style for the most part regrettably right now i mean if you want to restore something sure on your on your you know your old chevy or something like that but and everything is like powder coated and uh clear coated and yeah. uh of course, yeah, a lot yeah. of you know even wrap wrap on metal uh, use of wrap on metal is, right. you know, is, is easier right, right. right now. Yeah, the, the, the polishing Correct. game, man, it's 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 man, it's been, man, it's stretched out so far right now. I mean, you know, of course, I can see. I mean, because yeah. like I said a little while ago, you know, there's very few many guys that do chrome metal polish. Yeah, 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 and I want to make a distinction between. Um, chrome and aluminum um so there are the three the really three primary metals that go on a vehicle um aluminum is probably the easiest to work with um it's dirty much like any other metal polishing process but it's a lot easier to manipulate and get to a mirror finish uh, and then of course there's stainless steel which for example on, on some vehicles and the last part of it is chrome now there isn't really that much chrome left because Chrome in itself requires some sanding and finishing, uh, polishing that is, but then it goes to a, a uh, basically a chrome plater at that point. You really, once the chrome's been put on a, a piece of metal, uh, there really isn't too much you can do as far as polishing is concerned. Uh, we make a chrome metal polish, a hand polish that is, that will allow you to take off some tarnish, some light scratches, some light oxidation, but man, you really can't do much to, what, much to chrome. You know, if you've damaged your chrome, I mean, I can tell you how many times people call me up and say, hey, man, the rust is coming out from underneath my chrome. How do I polish that out? And the answer is you just can't. Wow. You got to strip it and re-chrome it. Uh, wow. Unlike raw stainless or raw aluminum, uh, which you'll find on big rigs, um, you know, the, the, you can refinish those, uh, you know, hundreds of times if necessary wow <laughs> yes it's, it's some so you learn something new every day you know and uh i know one touch you know he he deals with a lot of big rigs yep. himself uh and you know I, just me listening to him sometimes you know talk about these trucks i, I try to get as knowledge as possible because uh that's something i never took on you know i never really took yeah yeah you know for you and for your audience uh you know there is man i can't t there are just i don't know how many big rigs there are out there um, you know a million trucks on the road um you know those aren't going away anytime soon right. and uh, you would not believe the demand for quality polishers within the big rig scene so any of your um any of your followers, any of the people that are on this live right now that are interested in getting into picking up uh, another trade or, or, or a supplementary trade, something where you can uh, increase the, either the availability of your presence in the marketplace, your local marketplace, you might want to consider <clears throat> metal polishing. I mean, it, you know, it is pretty dirty, uh, and you're going to end up, you know, just, you know, covered from head to toe in, in soot by the end of the day, but it's rewarding. Um, it, it's, it's great money, and unlike, for example, detailing, like in your part of the world, you probably can't detail unless you're inside all that often. You can't really be a mobile detailer, I think, in the Northeast all year long right but you could probably be a metal polisher all year long because there's going to be that demand all the time right yeah, you, is, guys, uh, is, uh, you guys teach a class for metal polishing for the guys that's in california correct? so yeah we don't we don't teach a class per se we have one of our um one of our high-end guys is out of lubbock texas his name is uh texas polishing y'all can look him up he's at texas polishing on instagram uh, his name is Kevin Clapp. He has been doing this his whole life. He puts on a class at his facility once a month, the second 
the second weekend of every month. But he also does classes around the country as well. And, um, you know, what I'll do is I'll get you that information. You can share it to the community. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure when his next class is. But what he does, you, you know, you, he'll charge you, obviously, for the class, for the education. And then he will teach you the fundamentals of how to, to polish everything from sanding, because prepping is so important uh for polishing to have to have a successful finish right. all the way on through to like what bars what pads to use uh and what order what speeds you run your grinders all that kind of fun stuff um and he's also a professional detailer as well so it, it ties into the whole uh the whole scene uh, uh for you nice. all right all right so all the guys here's here on this live you guys are interested in doing any metal or chrome polishing uh to any big rig service that you may have going on yeah. Check out their website. They have a tutorial that's uh, listed there. You can go there and check out some of the yeah, guys yeah. that are going and, on. You know, and it's a great opportunity during the, you know, again, like during the winter, if you've got, you know, extra time on your hands, you've got some downtime, you've got, a, you know, a, you know, it's just a lot more difficult to be, especially a mobile detailer during the winter uh, in most parts of the country. That at least gives you the opportunity to say, hey, you know, I'm going to invest a couple thousand bucks in myself and go get this training done, at, you know, in Texas uh take in that trade and not only are you able to learn that trade from kevin probably really one of the one of the one of the most competent polishers on the scene but you also get to be um he'll also be a resource for you for as long as you know you've taken you know you took that class so you're his you know you're his boy for you know forever right. so he's always always available to you as a great resource when you do have those situations like hey how do i polish this or i'm not getting the finish i want at least you know that there'll be somebody there to to give you that ongoing support well, wow, that's it. That's, that's 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 solid right there. You know, we don't have very many guys in the industry that you know, that will take to you know. The yeah, students, no, yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot, a lot, a lot. Even the good polishers don't want to spend the time to teach other polishers. Everybody wants to like right. hoard the information, hoard the knowledge, and you know, thank God Kevin's on the other other end of that spectrum because, you know, as detailers, um, as polishers, you know, you can't keep doing this forever. Um, right. Um, you know, so for him, building up his educational aspect allows him to really uh, almost build a school that allows him to, you know, as he gets older, still still remain engaged in the industry and still able to, you know, to pass on that uh, knowledge and, and still honestly make a living. Right. 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 Yeah. It creating creating another lane for itself as right. time, yeah, time exactly. goes by. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I, and I totally respect that because, uh, you know, the body the body takes a lot of wear and tear in this field. And, and, you know that. You know that, yeah. You know, so, yeah, as we get older, guys, we got to start oh, yeah. looking at other avenues that, you know, generate yeah. our money. And, and, no, exactly. You got you to gotta look for the future. I mean, you, can, you can't keep doing what you do. You got to be able to, like, you know, either build a layer of, like, you know, you got to build yourself as, as manager and have, a, you know, maybe some of the younger guys underneath you or learn other trades that are going to carry you forward. Right, right. 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 Yeah. Right. I want everybody on this live to know that they just don't have a, a product line for Big Rig. They also have an official line for detailing, period. Yeah. yeah. Wax, so pump, 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 let, wax, let me grease. let me give you yeah let me give you my my I guess my sales pitch. So you know <laughs> Renegade products. Um, you know we, you know we have a lot of respect. I mean there are a lot of great products in the industry. But whether you're on the more you know general purpose stuff, and I'll just use chemical guys for example. They make, uh, they've got a fine product that's very general purpose, uh, very consumer friendly. Right. Um, we're we're not really like that. Um, we're kind of more like I would say more like the Adams type of, of product uh more more what they call pro consumer or prosumer um right. you know we we are located in southern california which is probably some of the most expensive manufacturing real estate in the country yep. if not the world so we we know we can't win a price war uh so you'll never find us at walmart or target or, or any of the big box places um our focus is creating basically and we're, we're, we're the I, I, you know, I, it's going to sound facetious a little bit, forgive me, but we, we're kind of like the, the Gucci of detailing products. Uh, we, we're high end, we're not the cheapest, and we just have some of the best ingredients. Like even when we're using, like uh, many of these products have solvents in them, uh, so it's a fancy word for cleaners. Um, and, you know, you can put 
all kinds of solvents in your in your spray waxes and your metal polishes and so forth to get to get what you want out of it but you got to remember i mean the more you cheapen it down the the more unhappy you're going to be especially as you become more and more competent and more and more uh educated on what you're doing and how you're doing it and how products last and the finishes that you're getting um to the point that you know we decided like we, we just are not going to put the cheap solvents in our products we're just going to put the higher end stuff right. and you know then that's just that's just our position we're probably never going to be a, a chemical guys or, or an atoms or, or a turtle wax but you know we know that we make some of the best stuff on the planet and that's that's what we want that's nice. and that and that's and that's what makes you guys renegade right 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 <laughs> yeah yeah and you see our dedication to like the social media end of it also i mean like a lot of people uh still kind of look sideways at social media but like I, I don't know about you guys but like you know i'm like probably twice as twice as old as anybody on this uh on this live right now and i don't pick up a magazine anymore i don't even pick up a newspaper okay if right. you know no, I still have some old magazines that are still delivered to my mailbox and they go straight from the mailbox to the garbage can. If it's not coming across my phone or my feed or if it's not information that I'm looking for, I, I just don't care. I don't have the time. Time is just so valuable to me and I'm sure to all of you guys that I get my information from what is going on on my phone. And that's why we take great effort in, in showing everybody on our socials what our products are and what they do. Nice. Nice. Right. Nice. Yeah. And I noticed you guys do, uh, I noticed you guys have like off road kits. Now, what are the yeah. off road kits? Uh, yeah. So let me explain the different markets that we're in. Um, so, big rigs is probably still our, our, our major market. Uh, we plus supply, of course, the polishing products and the detailing products to go into them. But we also, the other markets we approach, um, the lifted truck scene, which is not that big in Southern California. And I don't know how big it is in the Northeast, but like in the heartland, basically from Minnesota down to Texas and down to the Southeast, lifted trucks with their big forged wheels and, you know, their big tires and their lifts and everything like that. That's, you know, that's a good, good piece of market segment for us. And, you know, those guys and gals driving those need to keep those wheels polished up and they need to keep those those trucks clean. And so that's another market we approach. And so you'll find some forged wheel um, kits. You'll find some lifted truck kits on our on our um, on our website. Uh, the off road scene, which is very big in Southern California, there's a lot of dust and a lot of dirt and a lot of mud uh, to clean your side by side and your razors and so forth. And, and that's what that's for. And the newest market which we're in, um, and we're like basically in the Mecca of where that is, is, is the low rider scene. Man, we just love the lowriders. I mean, they're beautiful vehicles, incredible art, in, you know, incredible music, incredible ladies. Uh, and that is basically, you know, one of the other scenes that we're involved in. Um, so you'll find the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so you'll find that what we have done with the kits is because we have so many um, consumers that will DM us or text us or email or whatever and say, hey, I, I want to take care of my lowrider. What do you recommend I, I do? And, you know, that's obviously somebody who's just starting off, not a professional like yourselves. So that's why we create these kits, which make it so much easier, whether it's for us or for our dealer to say, hey, well, here's a great startup kit to keep your lowrider clean or keep your razor clean or keep your big rig clean or keep your forged wheels clean. That's, that's why we do that. Kits are designed to let you basically purchase the product so you can try it. Uh, I believe in, you know, see how well it works and then come back and get more of what you need from that kit. Makes sense. Makes sense. Great marketing mm -hmm. tactic. Makes sense. Great marketing tactic. And, uh, you know, uh, lifted truck up here in my area, I'm in the Northern California area, so in uh, lifted trucks up here, I mean, I see them a lot. I see them a lot. And now that I've been, you know, spent this time speaking with you about, I think that may be an area that I may need to target. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and you target you target it for two reasons because just the sheer size of those suckers requires so much more washing and cleaning and detailing. So you can obviously get good bang for the buck as far as for your hourly rate. But that's where the polishing comes in because you know not all lifted trucks have uh polished aluminum wheels. Uh, but probably half of them do and the other half is is powder coated and those powder coated wheels still need, you know, you still gotta Degrease them and take the brake dust off, and you know, soap them down, and all that kind of fun stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's great info to uh, to even.
know about. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I find that, you know, the detailers that, that kind of go beyond just the normal bread and butter uh, vehicles of their neighborhood that are targeting, you know, lifted trucks or big rigs or, or stuff that is just outside of the norm of like traditional detailing. Those are the ones that end up building uh, stronger relationships with their customers that allow them then to basically continue to build on that clientele. Uh, you know, ch chasing, you know, ch chasing the Chevy Suburban or the Honda down the street. I mean, like there are a lot of people chasing that business, but not too many people are targeting, like you said, the lifted trucks or the low riders or right. the side by sides. Right, right, right. Because uh, I have a it's, a, it's a low rider scene, uh, very, very close to me here, um, and it's also a lifted truck scene. Mm. We're well, very are close. To me. I'm in. I'm. I'm. I'm actually in Vallejo. I'm right outside of uh, Oakland. Berkeley. Oh, you're okay. Yes, yeah, Cecil. Like, there's, there's a huge lowrider scene up in the Bay Area. Actually, we'll be at the Tavares uh, in Salinas. We'll be at that lowrider show uh, later this year. It's a huge scene up in the Bay Area. Wow. Okay. Well, maybe I maybe I jam down there and uh, come come check you guys out. And check yeah, the scene come check us out. I think it's uh, the 29th of July or something like that over in Salinas. Uh, the huge show on the. Uh, uh salinas uh airstrip i believe i don't i think it's a it's a i don't think they use an airport anymore but that you know it's it's a combination of actually big rigs low riders and some uh some slam c10s oh They're man great scene uh, yeah, yeah right. i'm almost definitely have to tap into that and uh just, yeah you know, yeah, yeah. Go, you know just mm -hmm. go check out the vibe and, and if the people that's going here Salinas yeah. right outside of San Jose, California. So yep, you guys. Yep, that's a good, like I can tell you if you focus like because like there are not a lot of people that focus on that low rider scene. It's like you know it's like I mean there are some people that do, but it's like if you say hey man I'm I am detailer to the low rider scene. That's when you like that word of mouth becomes so incredibly strong. Right. Wow. Right. 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 So anybody, any you detailers that's on here in the Northern California area, Southern California. Any gallery that has a low rider scene, there you go. That's some oh, good yeah. knowledge to have. Yeah, yeah. You it's, know, and uh, there are there are there are some great pockets around the country. There's a, a great uh, in Chicago. There's a great scene in Houston. There's a great scene uh, in Texas. There's a great low rider scene. Even Kansas, believe it or not, and you know, has got a great low rider scene. Atlanta's got a huge wow. show. Um, so you know, look for look for that business. It's not just like SoCal. I mean, SoCal may be the largest scene. Uh, Bay Area is a huge scene, but you know the, you'll find uh, you know whether it's a lowrider or a donk. I mean, you'll find some of that stuff around the country. Uh, Florida is just full of that that whole donk scene in Florida and lifted truck scene. That's just massive in Florida. Well, right, right. You know because uh, yep. I, I participate a lot, uh, on the bike scene here in California, and the bike scene is big in, in Southern California. So yeah, uh, yeah. The, I, the bike scene, bike scene is the same way. I mean, there's a huge bike scene. My concern about the bike scene is that. You know, um, you know, it's mostly full of the you know, the OG old timer like baby boomers, <laughs> and I'm like, what's gonna happen when all those dudes die? Like, you know, it's like you know, there's gonna be a bunch of bikes for sale. Like, I have no idea. Like, I don't really like. I, we worked on some bike stuff, but it's just like, man, I don't, I don't know. It's just a whole different scene. I get, I get what you're saying. The age, the age is like a whole bunch of yeah. Yeah, well, yeah exactly. But, and the problem with those guys is like they're all the they're, that's the old turtle wax McGuire. Yeah, they, they all you know? do yourself. Right. right. Yeah. Right. I, I, I think I, I think uh, I think you're yeah yeah yeah. That's not the scene I'm on. <laughs> no, that's not the scene. You know, like I, I, I can't compete with like you know Maguire's and you know Turtle Wax been around. You know, I mean, I think maybe Jesus was using Maguire's. That's how long they've been around. Um, wow. And and it's just tough to break those old habits. And you know, I gotta tell you, like I make this shit for a living. And you know, anything you find on a big box store at Ace Hardware, at Walmart, at Target. I guarantee you that so has been watered down. It ain't the Maguire. It ain't your daddy's Maguire. I'll tell you that. Right, right, right. right. That's yeah. That's that's most definitely facts. And then uh, there's one more thing I wanted to cover with you that I yeah. that I seen that you guys were offering, and that is the uh, the labor program. The attorney private label? labor program. Right. Yes, correct. Uh huh. Private uh -huh. labor program. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. How how does that work? Yeah, so we've got a great uh, private label program. Uh, you know what? I'm going to walk you over to to my to my uh, my private label manager, and he'll describe <laughs> some of that for you. Thanks. Nice. Hold on cool. a sec. Cool, cool. Right. cool. Who, hap who happens to be my son? Son, I'm on a podcast. <laughs> I'm on a I'm on, a, I'm on a live with these gentlemen. They've got a group of detailers. What's up, y'all? Oh no, man, you doing? 
I think you're up in Connecticut, right? Once in Connecticut, what's in the beer? Yes, yeah, I'm in Connecticut. Like a private label program. He's, yeah, he's, a, he, he's in Connecticut. I'm in uh, Northern Cal. I'm in uh, Vallejo, California, actually. Yeah. So, so they want to cover some of the private label for themselves and for their audience. So why don't you just kind of fill them a little bit on that? Yeah, so private label uh, can go a couple different directions with us. Uh, we have uh, minimums as low as 60 bottles. So, uh, you know, 60 bottles, basically, you can choose your, uh, you could choose your product. I have 12 different ones to choose from, which are the 12 most popular products, such as like a wash and wax, a quick detailer. We have a ceramic spray, uh, degreaser. Yeah, soaps. I think I mentioned that, um, you know, 12 of the most popular ones we offer. And uh, again, you could do 60 bottles. And right. so it kind of makes it super convenient for you know, mobile detailers or, or people that are just starting out, well, you know, people that have the, small the, shops. and stuff Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It's awesome for everybody because like, if you're, if you have like a small business or whatever, you know, or you're just a detailer, or whatever, like you might as well use something that's got your own name on it as opposed right. to, you know, promoting chemical guys or atoms or whoever it is. Like, why not have it say your own name on it? And I guarantee you it's cheaper than whatever you would pay from, uh, from those guys. So, it's kind of a win-win situation and you could sell it to your customers because if somebody comes in and gets a detail from you, now you have a product to sell them and say, Hey, you know, thanks for coming in. You know, here's a product. It's 10 bucks, you know, um, maintain your car in between details or whatever it is. So right. I think that makes a lot of sense. So then for people that want to go the drum route, so you can buy a drum from us, and then uh, you can bottle it yourself. You know, doesn't, I always tell people that doesn't cost you anything to sit there on a Sunday with, you know, a pack of beer and, you know, one of your buddies, your wife or whatever, and, and you get your, your mother-in-law working, get yeah. some use out of mother yeah. or, or your kids, or your kids, or your right, kids. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 So. yeah no. I, I just want to rip open the box and, and put it up for sale. I don't want to do no work other than <laughs> yeah, pushing no, it out to the public. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, that's kind of the uh, private label program, uh, I guess, in a nutshell. Um, I have my website, which is www.carcareprivatelabel.com. Uh, you can order a sample off of there. You can uh, order the actual private label off of there. You can see all of the pricing, um, uh, the label, oh, the the actual label. So, so we uh, we have every um, people should probably know at this point that we have our own graphic designer on staff. Uh, so we uh, actually we, we handle all of the label creation here in house. Uh, which there's actually a couple different options for people as far as labels go. And that's all on uh, the website too. Yeah, you could see it. So we have two complementary designs that are on my website under each of the product pages that you can see. Basically, we just switch out the like your logo here stuff with, you know, your guys's logo. Sure. Um, then uh, any of your company information, like your website, phone number, address, stuff like that. Um, or you could, uh, we could send you guys our templates. This will be the third option. We send you our templates. You guys redesign it. Some, some people out there are like graphic designers themselves. So they have the ability to do, you know, the design and come up with something that they want. And right. then they could send it back to us and we print it out, you know, basically the cost of the labels already included in my pricing, uh, that's on the website. Or, uh, the fourth option would be, we have a paid option, uh, which we would, uh, basically create a custom label here with my graphic designer. We would get, you know, the potential customer, you guys or whoever, uh, would work directly with our graphic designer here in, in house to come up with, you know, whatever they have in mind for the aesthetics or the design of the label. So, uh, just kind of gives you guys access to us to be able to create something completely custom. You know, we charge 250 bucks for the first label. And then 25 bucks for each uh, subsequent label after that. So, That's on the custom label. Yes. So as an example, if somebody were to do like three products, like a soap, a dressing, and like a quick detailer, it'd be 250 bucks plus 25 plus 25 would be 300 dollars, and those are just one-time fees. And honestly, we don't really make money on that. It's literally just to cover the the graphic designer's uh, time. Um, you know, it's kind of a service that you know we like to offer here in house because a lot of our competitors uh, they don't offer that. You know, they just kind of will, oh, here's like a place that we work with. Go, you know, go talk to them. And um, right. sometimes those people like aren't as familiar with labels and label design and also the legal requirements that go on labels. And we're we're pretty by the book here right. when that stuff, uh, as far as that stuff goes. So right. we make sure that you guys, right. you know, uh, aren't going to get in trouble. And we obviously don't want to get in trouble either. So right. uh, ball you know, that's, that's, how, that's how we rock it. But. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. Yeah. Later, y'all. I think oh, you got a lot of detailers interested in that one right there. That's, um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you that know, that. And why we decided to do that, obviously, because, of, of course, we want to expand our business. But, you know, at one time when we were a much younger and smaller organization, 
it's like we wanted to do stuff with people and we'd come and say, hey, you know, we want to, you know, our own spray wax or something like that. And they said, great, yeah, no problem. You know, give us an order for 10,000 bottles. And I'm like, you know, look, at, look, there's just no way you can support 10,000 10, bottles from day one, never mind the cash for that. So the 60 bottles is a really a great entry level program for people that even if you just want, like Garrett said, you know, you have spent your, you know, you, you detailed somebody up and you just sell them a, you know, a bottle of, of instant detail or spray wax just for maintenance in between washes. Right. 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 Nice. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, want to touch you got anything you want to add to this live? You got any more questions? Um, before you ask any more questions, let me let everybody know on this live that we do have a promo code for yeah. Renegade product yeah. right now. One Touch 15 is the promo code. So if you're going over to Renegade to the website and you see anything that you are interested in and you do a purchase, you make sure you use the promo code One Touch 15 and you will get 15% off. I think you did a pretty good job um only thing i could probably ask is what's the difference between uh the red line products and uh right good, good question yeah the red line product actually was the og product uh for the trucking industry okay. uh so a lot of those products in there and again getting back to metal finishing and polishing so polished aluminum is is pretty temperamental so you don't want to be using acids for example or degreasers um that are going to tarnish that aluminum. You know, you've, you know, you paid somebody three thousand dollars to polish out the aluminum on your rig, and now all of a sudden you're using like a a water spot remover or a degreaser or something like that that's got some acids in it. So that whole red line was designed to basically address the anything going into the red line, in particular going into um, the chrome shops and the truck stops are safe for the polished aluminum. Wow. Okay. The other line, what we call the detailer series, is yeah. more of the broad line, general line, um, where it's got more, you know, heavier duty acids and, you know, cleaners and, and the stuff that's more what you're used to as a professional detailer or as a consumer would expect to purchase. But we just wanted to make sure that we're designating that red line. Most of that stuff in there is really, I mean, it's not just, it's not just made for big rigs, but it is, you know, that, that whole, that's where we started and that's kind of where, that whole line is centered around. Nice, nice, nice. All right, see, I, I wasn't even aware of it. I did see the red line on the website, but I, I, it flew over my head, so I'm glad you did. Well, you know, you'll see, for example, within the um, red line, for example, most of the liquid metal polishes are within the red line. Wow. Because, honestly, automotive, I mean, there really isn't a lot of polished metal anymore on your Honda or your Escalade. So you're not really going to find that in, you know, in, in our regular detailer series. But, you know, you are going to want some heavier duty degreasers and water spot removers and so forth. So that's why those are in, the, in that category. Nice, nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, man, you know, it was a pleasure, man, sitting there having a good conversation. <laughs> I, I learned a few things tonight. Uh, I met a great guy now. Well, I met two oh, I great guys that. tonight. Uh, and, uh, but, any of your people have any questions, you feel free to DM us or email us. So we'll of make sure we take care of everybody. And uh, and if they want us back on again, let us know. We'd, we'd always love to share our, our knowledge and build the community and build friendships and let people know that, you know, not only, yes, of course, we are here as a business, no doubt, but also it's uh, it's about community building, and that's always important yes. to us. Yes, yes. And we appreciate you guys. We really do it. And I would really love to have one of those T-shirts so I can wear on the live. <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that? That's it. That's it for the night, guys, man. Right, we'll see you guys you. next Monday. And uh everybody you guys have a good one. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right.